So we're going to finish out our unit with the law of cosines. Um, this will be slightly more complicated than the law of sines. Um, it's the same thing. So you have a triangle with your angles and then your sides across from it. Your angles are always uppercase letters and your sides are always lowercase letters. And your formulas are, if you're looking, it depends which one you're looking for on which one of these you're going to use. But what I want you to notice, in fact, I'll do this in different colors, is that the first and the last are always A's, and then the stuff in between are what's left over. So if you use A in the beginning, the stuff in between are B and C's. Otherwise, the formula is pretty much the same. So you have B squared, and then instead of B, you're going to have A and C, because those are the other two sides that are not B, and then 2 times A and C, and then the cosine of your angle B. So remember, lowercase is our sides, and then uppercase are angles. So like this. Okay. And you will use this any time you are given three sides and an angle. one of which of those things will be a variable. Okay, so this one's a little bit harder to set up. Um, and you don't have to use A, B, C. You can actually use all of it the exact same formula. Um, it's just whatever you're looking for, and then that angle that goes with it will be the first and last thing. So what I mean is, yes, we're given a C this time. So you will say C squared, and then your very last thing will be cosine of 48, because those are the two things that go together. And then you will have your sides. So 10 squared plus, and then your other side, which is 12 squared, and then minus two, there's a 10 multiplied there and a 12 multiplied there. So this is the whole formula. If you look, this inside stuff are the other two sides and whatever you're searching for, is first and last, whether it's the degree or the side that you're looking for, that's always the first and last thing, and those are the two things that go together. Sorry, it's our lunch period. Okay, now that we know what we're looking for, the easiest way to do this is to use your calculator. So C squared is what we're searching for. You want to put this part only in the calculator first. So 10 squared plus 12 squared, that gives us 244. And then we're gonna minus and put just this in the calculator, which is two times 10 times 12, 240, cosine of 48. And then, um, to undo the square, you're going to take the square root of both sides. So in the calculator, you're going to put all this in at the same time. So your square boot root button is right above this x squared button. If you look right here, it's a square root. So you press second and then that x squared. And then you're going to put all this underneath there. It should look the exact same except there should be a times button right there. Oops, wrong calculator. The uh, wrong calculator is about to pop up. There we go. Let me close this one. Okay. So square root of 244 minus, and then the last part, um, you might need parentheses for this last part like this. Let me see. I'll do both of them and we'll see if we need to. So 240 
times the cosine of 48, and then two sets of parentheses, enter. So 9.13 is for sure the correct answer. Let me see if you have to put these parentheses, this extra parentheses around the stuff after the minus. I think you have to. Oh, you don't. Well, there you go. Okay, so C is 9.13. So 9.13 will round to 9.1. Okay, so this time we are searching for A, which goes with C. So that will be 7 squared in the front and cosine of A at the back. And then we're going to have 8 squared plus 5 squared minus 2, and then the 8 times the 5. And that's how you set it up every single time. Okay, so again, we're going to do this in the calculator or in our heads, because 7 squared is 49. Do this part in the calculator. So 8 squared plus 5 squared. is 89 minus and put this part in the calculator 2 times 8 times 5 80 cosine of a now we need to isolate this by itself so we've got to move everything over the first thing is this 89 in the front is um, just a constant it's basically added or subtracted and since it's positive we're going to do the opposite with just subtract 89 on both sides and this gives us negative 40 then again our goal is to get this by itself so we need to move that negative 80 away and since it's being multiplied the opposite is to divide by negative 80 on both sides so you could reduce this if you want to, um, and it would reduce to one half if that's what you want to reduce it to. You can absolutely do that, but you don't have to, because what we actually have right now is that the cosine of A is equal to negative 40 over negative 80, or one half if you want to reduce it. So in order to find for the measure of angle A, you do the inverse cosine of that fraction. So whether you did negative 40 over negative 80, or the one half, it will give you the same answer no matter which way you do it. So you'll press second cosine and I'm gonna do one half and then I'll even show you um, that if you do negative 40 divided by negative 80, it'll give you the exact same answer. So whichever one you wanna do, you don't have to reduce it. This is an easy fraction to do and honestly, if it was a harder one for me to do, I would probably just leave it. Um, but because it's so easy, I know 40 is half of 80, then it's a half. All right, so this is 60 degrees for the measure of angle A. All right, so this is our angle and side that go together. So remember, we always do that up front and the cosine of 62 in the very, very back. And then we have 14 squared plus 12 squared minus 2 times the 14 times the 12. So again, we are going to do this part first in the calculator. Fourteen squared plus twelve squared. Oops, sorry. That's three forty minus, and then we put all of this part in the calculator. Two times fourteen times twelve, which is three thirty six cosine of sixty two. Do not ever try to combine these. You can't do that because this right-hand side over here has the cosine with it. So don't try to combine these. You can't. So we take the square root of both sides. 
and we're going to put all of this stuff on the right-hand side in our calculator. So square root first, 340 minus 336, and you can actually go ahead and put cosine of 62. It should still work the same. Yep. So 13.50 is just 13.5. Next one, this angle goes with this side. That's x squared in the front and the cosine of 59 in the back. And then we have 18 squared plus 28 squared minus two, then the 18 times the 28, like that. So put this in a calculator first, this in a calculator first. Oops, sorry. It happens frequently when I put it over to this side. All right, 18 squared plus 28 squared is 1108 minus and then we do 2 times 18 times 28, 1,008, cosine of 59. And then square root both of those. And x will be 11.08 square root um, 1108 minus 1. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Oh, sorry, I'm having issues here. There we go. Minus one, I pressed the wrong button. 1,008 cosine of 59. And that gives you 24.26, which rounds to 24.3. We're done with our notes.